let's do something a little different today. We're going to show you a few things over the course of this year so far. First, the Aussie dollar. It's had something of a roller coaster ride this year as predictions about future interest rates here and in America rise and fall. You can see for the year, it's about where it started, but is four US cents of its peaks back in March. Let's look also at the best performing stocks from the top 200 on the ASX this year. The African focused gold miner, Resolute Mining, it's the best. It's more than doubled, though it was off almost 10% as gold prices fell last week. There's also the metal detection company, Coden maker of the world-leading MineLab handheld detector. Its shares are hit by 86% this year. And among other strong performers by gold miners, West Gold is next best. It's hit by more than 70%. If we go to the worst performers from the top 200, Elders is a bit of a surprise here, down by 37%. Given the strength of the rural sector and the relative weakness in the Aussie dollar, it was smashed after its inter-profit was released down 45% to $50 million, but also came off the back of a very good 2021. And as we can see, those shares down quite sharply this year. It's a similar story for Whitehaven Coal. It rode the boom in coal prices in the wake of the Ukraine war. It was the best stock on the ASX in 2022. This year, as coal prices have fallen, its shares are down 32%, though it's almost three times higher than it was three years ago. And there's little surprise after its regulatory problems and management shakeout that the Star Entertainment is also among the weakest. You can see its shares down by 31% this year. Have a look at that big, sharp drop early this year. And to show you a linkage between gold and cryptocurrency, both of these have had big jumps this year. Bitcoin bottomed out early in the year around $16,000. It's rebounded to $30,000 US. Right now, you can see here buying just under $25,000, up by 56% this year. Gold's done much the same thing, rising from about $1,800 US an ounce to close on record prices above 2,050 an ounce before it's retreated a little bit in recent weeks. We should also show you the oil price, which has been highly volatile as Russia seeks to keep its cash flows going and the Saudis and OPEC countries try to balance the supply and the demand. It started the year around $80 US a barrel, peaked out around 88, then tanked a couple of times to around $70, which seems like something of a flaw for OPEC. At that point, it jumped in, cut production to keep oil prices from falling further in the face of the expected economic downturn. 